Welcome to the video, Fourth Grade Fraction and Decimal Concepts, focusing on representing and comparing tenths and hundredths, both in fraction and decimal form. The fourth grade standards related to decimals are NF5, NF6, and NF7. This cluster begins with NF5, where students are given a fraction with the denominator of 10 and having them find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. This standard also asks that students use this information to add a fraction with a denominator of 10 to a fraction with a denominator of 100. The next standard in this cluster, NF6, asks students to convert between simple fractions and decimals. The last standard asks students to compare two decimals by reasoning about their size and using visual models. The remainder of this video will explore these standards in depth. We will now take a closer look at NF5, which asks students to express a fraction with denominator 10 as an equivalent fraction with denominator 100. The second part of the standard asks students to use this technique to add two fractions with denominators 10 and 100. First, introduce tenths and hundredths by using the base 10 blocks to show examples of what tenths and hundredths could look like. Give one student two rods and another student 20 units and ask, who has more? Once students realize the amounts are the same, engage in a conversation about equivalent fractions. Also, use the examples of dimes and pennies and how they relate to tenths and hundredths. This time, give one student three dimes and another student 30 pennies and ask the same question, who has more? Once again, the goal is for students to recognize that two amounts are equivalent. After students have ample practice with various manipulatives, ask students how can we represent tenths and hundredths as fractions. Write one tenth on the board and ask how can we represent this fraction using hundredths instead of tenths. After representing the fractions numerically, also show models of 10 by 10 grids to match the numeric representation. Call a student up to shade in 1 tenth and have a different student come up to shade in 10 hundredths. Ask students to share what this represents. Students would again be able to conclude these are equivalent fractions. Then ask students to practice representing equivalent tenths and hundredths numerically. Students could use their small whiteboards and practice with various examples that I write on the board. Two tenths equals how many hundredths? Five tenths equals how many hundredths? How many tenths equals 40 hundredths? How many tenths equals 70 hundredths? An activity such as this address the first part of standard NF5. To provide practice with the second part of the standard, an activity such as the one on your screen can be given. This activity encourages students to add two fractions, one with a denominator of 10 and the other with a denominator of 100 by converting to hundredths. It also encourages flexibility in student thinking by having students work backwards. Here they are given a number in hundredths and they need to break it up into two to three different quantities. After sufficient practice with tenths and hundredths as fractions, students will be ready to move into converting fractions into decimals. Remember, fourth grade is the first time that students are seeing decimal notation. Before converting fractions to decimals, you may need to spiral back and do a brief review of place value before teaching standards NF6 and NF7. Discuss how the value of a digit decreases as it moves to the right in a number. Ask questions such as, what happens when I move to the right of the ones place? What is 10 times less than one? Also link decimals back to money. Tenths are like dimes and hundredths are like pennies. Hopefully you have a number line in your classroom from teaching fractions. Using this number line, students can easily see that decimals work the same way as fractions. Remind students that between any two whole numbers, there are other numbers. Explain that in previous lessons we learned that these numbers are called fractions. Today we will learn that decimals work in the same way as fractions. Notice that the fraction one-tenth falls in the same place the decimal one-tenth falls. They even sound the same when we say them. They just look different. 
Something else we learn with fractions is that between any two fractions on the number line, there are more fractions. This works the same way with decimals. For example, between 3 tenths and 4 tenths, there are other numbers. Here is 34 hundredths. It's a little more than 3 tenths and a little less than 4 tenths. Because number lines can be an abstract model for some students, be sure to make connections between the number line and visual models. You can even hang the visual models below their corresponding decimal on the number line as a permanent reminder. Here we see 3 tenths on a 10 by 10 grid and 4 tenths on a 10 by 10 grid. Using a third 10 by 10 grid, students can see that 34 hundredths is a bit more than 3 tenths and less than 4 tenths. Once students have a basic understanding of decimals, they can begin to convert between fractions and decimals. Be sure that the fractions students work with have denominators of 10 or 100. When asking students to convert between fractions and decimals, start by having them build a model. Two appropriate models would be a 10 by 10 grid or coins. Once students build the model, they can then represent it numerically first in the fractional form and then using decimal notation. A fun activity for working with fractions and decimals is to challenge students to find words worth one whole dollar. They would use a 10 by 10 grid to represent the value of the word, then represent the word numerically using both decimals and fractions. A link to this activity is in the comments section below this video. Another fun activity is called toss -a meter In this activity, students compete against each other to see who can come closest to tossing a cotton ball or paper ball a distance of one meter. In one round, they measure the distances to the nearest tenth of a meter. In another round, they measure the distances to the nearest one hundredth of a meter. Students should record their tosses as a fraction and decimal. Be sure to explain that a meter stick represents one whole meter and the numbers on the stick represent fractions of that meter. Before you complete teaching this standard, be sure to introduce and give ample practice using the TI-15 calculator, specifically the fraction to decimal function. Lastly, we'll examine NF7. Compare two decimals to hundredths by reasoning about their size. Recognize that comparisons are valid only when the two decimals refer to the same whole. Record comparisons with greater than, equal to, or less than. Justify the conclusions, example using visual model. This standard asks students to compare two decimals. Therefore, we will not need to have students put a series of decimals in order. When comparing two decimals, it is very important that students use visual models. Otherwise, they tend to mistakenly believe that 60 hundredths is greater than 6 tenths when they are in fact equal. Continue to use the visual models from standards NF5 and NF6 when comparing two decimals. Besides continuing to use the same models from standard NF6, you can reuse the activities dollar word search and toss a meter. With dollar word search, you can have partners compare the values of their names. With toss a meter, partners can compare distances their paper ball was thrown. Thank you for watching the video, 4th grade fraction and decimal concepts.